pillar of Excel than Power BI, right? But I believe they are all still the same because Power BI started from Excel. Even the DAX language started from Excel. For those of us that use Pivot Table very well, I don't know, maybe you remember in Pivot Table there is a limitation, right? And if you remember that limitation in Pivot Table, then the limitation is just simply that you can't connect to more than one table. You can only connect to a single table. That's the first limitation. And another limitation in Pivot Table then is that you can't express yourself. You can't really write any kind of um, calculations or measure, except you are doing a calculated a calculation field like you are doing a minus and plus, right? So that's why Microsoft just uh, think of DAX and they just invented DAX in the. Um, 2010, I guess. Yes, 2010. So it came into existence in Excel, and it came with a, a tool called Power Pivot. And I'm sure most of us have heard of Power Pivot. So Power Pivot in Excel allows you to create a data model and it speaks a language called DAX. And that DAX is what we are learning today. And it's, it's, it's a very, very interesting um, topic to learn. So today, I don't want to waste a lot of time on the, um, introducing DAX. So my name is Adewale. This is just this small boy that you're looking at. Uh, I'm a business intelligence analyst, I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, I'm a power platform evangelist, and a community leader. I'm also a MCT. Okay, so these are my Twitter handle, this is my YouTube channel, and this is also my LinkedIn um, um, profile. So if you, if you don't connect with me on LinkedIn, please kindly look for Adiwale Yusuf and connect to your boy here. So basically today, this is our agenda. We'll be talking about um, how you, how, you, how you can work with variables, working with variables in DAX. Then we'll be doing an intro to DAX Studio and its usefulness, then understanding DAX query as well. Then we'll be learning summarize and add column. This is, these measures are very, very important in the query, and which will be the part of what we'll be doing today. And also, we'll be doing altering filter context with, with DAX, right? So how many of us is familiar with Dask Query? Let me even ask from that. Can you type in chat? How many of us has used something called Dask Query before? Have you heard of Dask Query? Let me just ask in chat. Have you heard of Dask Query? Because I'm, I'm sure some people will say, ah, okay, well, which one is Dask Query again? So I can see somebody raising his hand, that you're buying me a delicate. Okay, you've heard of it. That makes sense. Okay, so have we all heard of it also? Ola, yes. Yeah. So Dask Query, is another type of DAX. So DAX is basically um, split into three different things because DAX, when they are trying to create a DAX, DAX is, uh, the idea of DAX actually came from three different um, categories. It came from Excel side, it came from SQL side, and also came from MDS, right? So that is why if you are coming from the SQL Server side, SQL, DAX is for you. You are coming from Excel, don't worry. Most of the functions you write in Excel, they are in DAX. And if you're coming from MDX side, most of the functions you use in MDS, they're also in DAX, right? So I won't waste time on the introducing the agenda. Then I will just mention some resources we can make use of. So for me, uh, when I'm trying to learn DAX, these are the kind of book I can recommend for people. And I read this, uh, I'm sure I read this one called Power Pivot and Power BI with, uh, from Rob Collins. So I also have, uh, I re I've read this, uh, The Definite Guide to DAX as well. So you can just lay your hands on all these uh, resources and make sure you read them. And I'm sure by the time you'll be able to finish this book, especially the, the last one to the right, this uh, the definite, uh, definitive guide to DAX. You should be a guru in DAX, right? So I will jump to the demo. And uh, my first demo today that I'll be doing is then uh, working with variable, right? Some people don't really understand variable. Uh, due to my experience, I'm sure some people do a lot of stuff in Power BI, and till now, many people have not yet even write a single variable, right? Because most people don't really see the need for variable, or most people don't see the reason why you should use a variable. But variable is important. Let me just tell you some advantages of using variable, especially when you are writing your DAX. So the first advant advantage of um, using variable is reusable code. So you can easily write a code that you can reuse inside your DAX formulas, right? So write the code, you can reuse them. Write the code, you use it. Write the code, you use it. Some of us are familiar with Python. This variable is also in Python as well. You can just write a code and you, re you reuse them. Then also, it increases the performance of your query or your report, right? So instead of you having, uh, for example, uh, before I started using query, I can write like seven different DAX. 
to achieve a particular goal. So imagine me writing a seven different DAX to achieve a particular goal. And by using a variable, I can write a single DAX that will combine all those seven DAX that I, write, that I wrote individually into one. So using variable it just uh, increase the performance of your query. And it is also very easy to write and maintain. It's very easy. You are just declaring this. So I'm trying to declare. So this should be this, this should be this, and th that should be that. So it's, it's very easy. So another one is very easy for users to read and interact with. So people can just read it. It's very easy. When people see your DAX measure, they will just read it. In fact, I can show you like one DAX I wrote like two years ago. I'm looking at that DAX again myself, and I, I don't even understand it. I was like, ah, why did I write this complex? Just join this plus this plus this plus this. Because I didn't I arrange it very well. But with variable and something called DAX formatter, I'm sure most of us uh, have been using DAX formatter already. So with that, people can easily read and interact with your measures. And then in, in, in simple, variable is just like a placeholder. And then variable can be used in both scalar expression and table expressions. It's not only in scalar expression, you can only use variable. You can use it in both scalar expression and can also use it in a table expression, right? So I will jump into um, variable demo and let me show you this report and let's just write one or two DAX using variable as an example. So if I bring this my report that I have on my screen here. Yeah, so I have this report. I'm sure you can see this report now, right? Can you see this report? If you can see this report, just type yes in chat. Yeah, let me be sure you can see this report I'm showing you now. Okay, so uh, Madam Olajumake, you can see the report. So I have this uh, this small report over here. So this is the annual sales report of um, a particular company, and then we are comparing month on month, blah blah. Even if I go to report two, I still have some stuff here. Although it's very easy to achieve all these things, right? But how how, how will you be able to achieve some complex things, right? Because when, when, when you connect with data, one of the most important things in that data is you, you should bring the beauty out of that data by writing an interesting DAX, okay? So let's say, for example, um, in fact, let me just, uh, let me duplicate this page, right? And let's say, for example, this particular report, I want to write my own, um, maybe revenue, month on month variance, right? So I have 2014 here, and I have 2015 here. Under 2014, I have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then I have 2015, January, February, March, up to June, right? For me to be able to write a month-on-month -month comparison, to be able to compare this month with last month, right? So I'm, I'm trying to compare two things. I'm comparing this month with last month. But if I look at my data, the only thing I have in my data is just sales. I don't have... Um, uh, revenue last year, unlike Excel. If it's in Excel, you can easily just reference the last cell. But remember, Power, Power, Power BI or DAX work with table, not cells, right? It works with table and columns, right? So I need to now look for, I want to write a, a revenue last month, and I want to compare it with revenue this month. In order to be able to do that, I need to be able to bring out my revenue last month. So what some people will do to achieve this comparison, they will first of all write uh, a, a, an anchor measure. There's something called an anchor. So anchor measure is something that just oversee all your report. It's anchor all your report. Just like, um, uh, I'll call it maybe, um, I have sales, right? So I can just say sales. This revenue sum. This is like I'm summing my revenue. That's my anchor, right? My total revenue is my anchor. That anchor all other time intelligence, all other variants and the likes. So some people will just have their anchor first. Then after they have their hand call, they will now have their revenue last month. They will now do a calculation. Uh, give me this almighty calculate. I'm sure we learned that calculate last, last session because I was in the last section too for understanding DAX. And then during the last section, you learn calculate a powerful function for filter contests, right? So people now use calculate to reference sales and give me last month. They now do a comparison between the two. So instead of writing like four or five DAX, you can actually do all this in a single DAX expression without wasting your time. Okay, so let me show you how to do this. If I just, uh, just let me just go to my DAX and just do new measure. 
Okay, so I want to write a measure now. Let me let me increase my screen size so you can see this. Okay, so I'm writing a measure, and the measure I want to write is month-on-month um, -month percentage um, variance. I want to write a month-on-month -month percentage variance, and remember, I said I said to be able to have a variance, you need to compare two things. Now, presently, I don't have um, last month, and then. I don't have this month. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create this month. And to do this, whenever I want to use a variance, I need to now declare a formula using var, right? Can you see var? So that's my variable, var, right? Similarly, I type var. Var means that I want to declare something, right? I want to declare a particular thing. And immediately you type var, the next thing is your, let me say, your declaration name, right? So I want to write a sum of my revenue. So I'm just going to put the name here. So I'll call it uh, maybe, um, I can call it total sales. So let me just call it total sales. Remember, there should be no space when you are declaring the name of the formula. There should be no space, right? So once I type my total sales, now in my total sales, I want to see some, the normal sum we are familiar with. I want to see some, and I'm summing my, uh, let me just say fat sales revenue. I'm summing my fat sales revenue. Yeah. So my fat sales revenue. So I have my fat sales revenue. I have declared this total sales to be my fat sales revenue, right? Some fat sales revenue. I've declared this now. So now I have total sales, right? That's my first declaration. And this is my this month. I can call, in fact, I can even call this this month instead of calling it um, total sales because the sum of the revenue for, for a particular filter will show you what you filter by, which is this month. So now I want to achieve my last month. I'm, I'm going to do another declaration. And in this, my declaration, I'll do VAR again, right? Declare another thing. And now I'm writing the um, revenue LM. So I'll just say revenue last month. And what will my revenue last month be? Remember that powerful functions that allow you to alter a filter context, right? Who knows that function? The function that allows you to alter a filter context. I'm sure that function is very popular. Most of us know it. Just type it in chat. That function is very popular. Most of us know that function to alter a filter context. So I want to alter a filter context to give me revenue last month, right? And that powerful function is called calculate, almighty calculate. In fact, to most people, when you learn calculating DAX, in fact, you believe we already know everything, right? Because that's the most powerful function in DAX. Right? So I will write a calculate, and in my calculate, I'm just going to just do, I want to calculate sum of revenue, right? Sum of revenue, my fat, fat sales revenue, right? Um, and the fat sales revenue, yeah. My fat sales, uh, I think I use fat data. I have two table here. Let me just use the second one, fat sales revenue, uh, fat sales revenue. And let me just type revenue. So I have fax sales revenue, right? Uh, yeah, I have fax sales revenue, but I think I need to change this to fax data as well. I'm using two data sets at once. Yeah, let me just change this as well. Okay, so I have the uh, fax sales, fax sales revenue, right? I'm summing fax sales revenue. Let me just delete this. Okay, so this is my another, another declaration. So I'm calculating some of fax sales revenue. Then I'm going to put a filter by putting a comma. Once I put a comma, if I let me close this bracket for some, once I put a comma, I'm adding a filter. And the filter that I'm adding is previous month. So I want to bring in previous month as my revenue LM. So once I do previous, now I will see previous. Yeah, once I see previous, I can now put, uh, you can see previous is asking for date. Anytime a filter is asking you for date, always use your dimension, the date, dimension date, right? For me, I have the calendar as the dimension. So I will just pick that and then Close my bracket. So I have my revenue LM now, right? Once I close my bracket for a previous month, then I'll close my bracket for calculate. So I have this month and I have last month. I've declared this month and I've declared last month. So the next thing for me is to do is to now do my form of calculation, which is my variance. So do like a variance, right? 
So if I come to the next uh, line and I do a, uh, remember how to do a variance then, right? And the formula for variance is very simple. So when you're trying to do a percentage variance, it's just your this month um, divided by your last month minus one, right? Actually divided by budget minus one. We know that's a percentage of variance, right? So I'm just going to use a divide function. Sorry, I need to write a return, right? So I'm returning my, now I want to return all the declaration that I've made. So now doing my return, I will now write a formula called divide, right? And my divide, my numerator, which one do you want to be at the top? I want total sales to be at the top. And immediately I type total sales. Blocking, let me just minimize it. Immediately I type my total sales, you can see my de declaration down here. Can you see this XY, this XY sign here? That is telling you this is a declaration, it's a variable, right? Once I pick it, I want to divide this variable, I'll put a comma to put a denominator, and my denominator is revenue LM. So once I type rev, rev LM, let me see. To show my declaration, uh, let me unzoom this, yeah, so I can see everything below. Yeah, so this is it. So you can see revenue LM, right, which is another declaration that I just made. So I'm dividing total sales, comma, divided by this, and remember, minus one, if you want a percentage uh, variance. So once I do this, return uh, divide total sales, um, divided by revenue LM, minus one, right? So that is variable. Once I click on enter, okay, so I think I have something like this before. Let me just call this one the um, VAR, yeah. But once I click on enter, I have actually write a month-on-month -month percentage variance successfully without stress, right? So instead of, some people will now have like three functions to achieve this. So when I drag this to my table, um, let me drag it to my table. When I drag it to my table right now, you can see the function that I just wrote, right? But here, yeah, look at this. I have uh, minus one, minus 0.4. In fact, let me change this to percentage. I click on it, I'll just change it, change it to percentage. Yeah, so I've done that. So, but where there is no value, can you see this? When there is no value, I can now see minus 100, minus 100, minus 100, minus 100, because there is no value here, right? This is another problem that we need to solve, right? And I don't need to write another measure to solve this problem. I can always go back to my formula and amend my formula, and it's still only seen inside one single formula. If I go back here, I don't want to see all those minus 100. I'm just going to take that, that. Anywhere you see total sales and revenue, when this month and last month is present, that is when you should do the calculation. When you see a sales here, and you see a sales in the last month, that is when you should do the calculation. If you don't see a sales in the present month, and in the last month, they don't do a calculation, right? So I'm just going to write that if statement, and that if statement is still going to be inside my variable, right? I don't need to go to any other, I don't need to write any other dash function. I will just write an if at the back of my define. So when I write an if, then remember, I need to join two things to be able to achieve that. So I'll just join and, and then when I add my hands to that, my hand is just simply another uh, conditional statement that allows you to add two things. So in my heart, I want to just, uh, if total sales, the declaration that I made, the total uh, sales declaration that I made, this total sales, total sales, this one, if it's present, right, comma, and the other one is present too, which is revenue um, LM, which is revenue LM, if revenue LM is present too, right, then I want you to do the divide. I'll just put my comma at the back here. I want you to do the divide, right? Then if S, don't do anything, right? Just close my bracket for me. I just want to see blank. If S, then don't do anything. Then once I press enter, let's look at what this formula is doing for me. Now, can you see that all those minus 100, minus 100 has disappeared, right? And I'm writing all this measure inside a single measure, right? I'm writing the month on month variance inside a single measure. And this is it. Very simple. Very easy for people to read. You can just come here, read my formula, and the rest. So another one that I mean wants to achieve is uh, something like uh, something like this, something like what I have 
what I have up here. Look at this. So now I'm, I'm putting my path. So this is my line of business. I have my line of business here. And this is my line of business shows all the line of business. I have copy assets, I have parts, I have print assets, I have service plan. Then I have 2014 and I have 2015. So for parts, let's pick parts, for example. Parts. Parts has um, 5 million in 2014 and has 2 million in 2015. Right? Can you see that huge difference? Look at the huge difference. Something happened to parts between this year and this particular year. So some people want to see that kind of um, report. Okay, I want you to visualize part alone, maybe in a card. I want you to show me the, the revenue of uh, part last year in a card. Instead of showing it in a table like this, I just using a filter contest. So I want you to show a part in a card. And in that card, I just want you to show a calculation that show part last year. So that when I select a current year, the parts last year will show, right? And it is very easy to create a part last year. And let me let me just show you another ways to do that. If I go to my new measure again, I'm writing variable this time too. Remember, you should always use variable to write your DAX efficiently so that people can easily see your DAX and interact with it. So always use variable to declare. So let me just call this um, part, uh, I'll just call this part sales last year. Part sales LY, right? So I'm trying to write a part sales LY. I'm, I'm going to declare my filter first because I want to filter my table by parts. Before you be able to do anything on part, you have to just bring out part from that table first, right? So once I type var, this is var again, and in my var, I want to declare lob. So I can just call it, um, let me just call it um, part. I'll just call it uh, lob part. Lob part, I'll call this lob part. And this is my lob part. I'm just going to use a filter function. So filter function is excellent when you are doing a filter to return a table that has a filter, right? So once I click on filter, filter is asking for table. And then what's my table? My table is simply my DLOB. So I have a table, I have a dimension called DLOB. And in that dimension, that is where I have my path. Let me type it again. Come up, come up. So I have a table called DLOB. It's coming up. Hmm. I think, yeah. I have a table called DLOB. That's my that's my table. But well, I'm not going to filter that table because if I filter that table, it will return everything inside that table for me. So one important thing that I need to do is that I should return all everything in that table first, all the line of business in that table first before I will now pick part. Before you pick part, return all the line of business in DLOB. So that is when the all function come in. So I need to be able to add all function here. So, so that all function can help me to return my DLOB column, right? So once I do a all function here, I will just close my bracket. So this will return all the DLOB, all the line of business, right? So once I have all the line of business, I now want to filter it by part. When DLOB, this is my DLOB, is equals to part, right? I will just type part like this. When this is equals to part, then I will close my filter bracket, right? So I've just declare, I just declare lob path. I brought path out from all the table. That's why I just declared right now. And then what I need to do now is to now declare the path last year. But let me just say last year. Let me just say ordinary last year. So I need to bring out last year. And you know the, the that favorite functions to bring out last year is just same period last year. So that when you pick a date. It will just give you that period, yes, some exact period last year. So I'm just going to declare another one. And then during my declaration, I'm going to call this one. Let me just call uh, part LY. Mm. I'll just call it part LY, which is part last year, right? And then in this one, I'll just do same period last year. And this, my same period last year, we just reference my D calendar. This is my D calendar date. Now I'll close my bracket. So I'm referencing my simple, my my parts last year. That's what I'm doing right now. Then to calculate my last year sales now, remember what I just mentioned. DAX is English. I'm just going to return and just do a calculate. Remember I said calculate. And once I do a calculate, what do I want to calculate? I want to calculate my revenue and filter it by line of business and also filter if that line of business is last year, right? 
So I'm just basically going to do a sum of uh, sum of revenue. So sum my revenue, right? So once I sum my revenue, the first filter will now be the LOB part that I created, right? The LOB part that I created, that will be my first filter. So once I type LOB part, you can see that that's my first filter. And if I do a comma, my second filter is now part last year. So once I type part last year, yeah, so you can see my part LY here, right? So once I put my part LY here, I just need to close my bracket. So once I close my bracket, this will give me my part last year. For some people to achieve just this simple formula, some people can use close to like three or four darts, right? Once I type, once I click on enter, sorry, I think I type uh, one comma at the back by mistake. Okay, let me remove it. And once I click on enter now, so this will return the part last year for me. In fact, let me open a new page and just visualize it on the card. So if I just put this, my part LY here, so now presently showing 8 billion, right? So, but if, if I have a filter of last year, let me just bring my filter of this year from here and let me put it here. And then if I put a filter of, uh, let me just select 2015, for example, and uh, don't synchronize. So 2015, if I select 2015, it will show me part last year, right? And I think I have part this year here, uh, in this my table here. Let me just bring it from here to here. Yeah. I have part this year. So once I select 2015, to show me part last year, I'm part this year, right? So I cannot do a variance between the two to see that, okay, I want to know what's not the percentage different. Because most um, managers are always interested in percentage difference. They want to know the difference in percentage, not in, uh, in just minus, by just doing this minus this, right? So instead of me, I can, I can leave this like this and write another measure for the percentage difference. Or since I know that my manager needs the percentage difference, I can write everything in my single DAX without, doing the, without writing another one. So I can change this one. In fact, let me go back there. I can change this one to percentage different instead of just calling it uh, part ly. So I will write everything here. So I will just call it, uh, I will just call it part goods. Let me just say part goods, right? Part goods um, um, percentage. I'll just call it part goods per percentage. I'm just going to amend this, my formula, to make sure it is exactly what I have there. And how do I do that? It's very simple. I have my return here already. And you know that percentage is basically this year divided by last year minus one. And I already have last year here in my return. This is my last year, right? So I'm just going to join this year with this and just minus it by one, right? So I need to write a divide function here. I need to write a divide function. I want to divide, I think this is uh, last year. Okay, so my this year will come first. So I'll just put a comma. So the comma should stand there. Then this year, this year to not bring out parts, to bring out parts, right? As this year, we need to write a calculate again. I'm just going to do a calculate. So I'm calculating my, uh, let me say fat sales. Let me just do a sum of um, revenue again. I can do a revenue sum here as well. Calculate sum. Okay, I think my keyboard right now. Calculate sum. Okay, so I'm summing my revenue. Right, my fact data revenue. Right, then I'll close my sum. Then the filter will now be if the LOB column is equals to parts. Right, that's my filter. If the LOB column is equals to parts, so I'll just do DLOB. DLOB, I think is an uh, I wrote it as D underscore. Yeah, so if my DLOB like this is equals to parts, parts like this. Then I'll close my bracket for the calculate. Now, I have wrote my divide here. So this is divide, and this is my present. In fact, let me even uh, shift this down so you can see the formula perfectly. So this is divide, calculate some faxes revenue, TLOB part, comma, calculate some faxes revenue last year. And then I'm just going to close my divide here. Once I close my divide, I will minus one. Right? Once I minus one, that will give me my percentage different. Let me click enter and let's see. Okay, so can you see the difference? So once I click on this, so give, give me the difference, right? 
And it's just showing minus one. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I think that is correct. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's correct. So it's just giving me the percentage difference of everything that I wrote. Right? So that's basically how to declare and use a variable. But I don't want to spend much time on variable today. There are still more complex that I can write with variable. But I have some other things I want to show you very quick. And this is just 335 already. I think I still have like how many minutes, Mr. DG? I think I have like. Um, you let's are say on to 350. To 350. OK, so I still yeah. have like um, 15 minutes, I guess. Yeah, so I think I still have like 15 minutes. So let me just quickly go to the next thing in my agenda. I need to introduce you to something called Dash Studio, right? M many people have heard of Dash Studio, and then most of them have not even started using it. And Dash Studio is very, very efficient. You can see the way I'm trying to format my DAX myself here. I'm trying to do shift enter to format it nicely. With Dash Studio, you can actually format your DAX easily and you can query your DAX very fast. And then, uh, in fact, let me show you what um, Dash Query, uh, Dash Studio is. Let me just open Dash Studio on my system. Let me open Dash Studio. Okay, so this is a Dark Studio. I'm using 2.10 version. You can always download it for free. I will drop the link of where you can download the um, Dark Studio to the chat. So Dark Studio is free. You can go and download it for free. Uh, if you go to darkstudio.org, you can download it for free, and then it's very easy to use, right? I have this my Dark Studio here. Look at this Dark Studio. This is Dark Studio, and it's very easy. You can see this is just like a Microsoft Office uh, ribbon. And then I have Connect, I have Format Query. This is like a format. You're formatting your DAX. Most of us use DAX formatter, right? If you're using DAX formatter to format your DAX, you can do it right here in your DAX Studio. So if I want to connect to a data, for example, I have my report open. Once I click on this Connect, you see that the report I have open is already here. PBI, I'll just need to select this and Connect. Then it will connect my model. So look at my model. These are all the table I have inside that report. So this is the canvas where I can write my DAX, where I can write my query. So DAX Studio, it's, it really makes sense when you're writing a query, really. When you're trying to actually write a query on your data, right? But most people, I, I think somebody asked me, what is even the DAX query that you've been talking about? So DAX query is very, very simple as well. Let me just do a simple introduction to DAX query for you. DAX query is just like uh, you are writing a new table measure in DAX. And there's three ways to write a query. Just like your power, power, um, power query, in your power query, you are trying to remove other column, you are trying to remove duplicate, do sort of kind of stuff. In DAX as well, you can write a measure that will give you a table. And the, the, uh, you have three ways to do that. You have three ways to write a measure that will give you a table with DAX. The first way is by using your normal DAX new table. If I go to DAX here and I come to modeling, so there is a, a command here called new table. Look at it up here. So once I click a new table, I'm writing a query because the function that I'm, I'm writing is going to bring back a table, right? So another way to do this is by using your DAX studio. So you can also use your DAX Studio to write a query. The third one is by using your SQL Server Management Studio. I don't know, maybe we, some of us use SQL uh, Server Management Studio here. You can also write a query with SQL Server Management Studio, right? And it's very easy. In fact, let me show you how to write some query with this, which is very simple. So when you are writing a query in DAX Studio, one thing that you must understand that your query must start with evaluate. It must always start with evaluate. But if you are writing your query using Power BI Desktop and you are just doing new table, you don't need to put evaluate. Evaluate is already there, it's inbuilt, right? But when you are writing your query in DAX uh, Studio, you have to just put this evaluate. In fact, let me just evaluate something right now. I want to evaluate, let me say, I'm going to bring my fact sales. If I just type my fact sales like this, fact sales table, fact sales table. If I click on run here to just run my query and give me the table here, 
or I can just use F5 just to run. So once I click on F5 to run, you can see my table down here. Can you see the table down here? So this is my table down here. This is the table that I just query right now. I just bring fax sales into this my dash query. And this is my table. Another thing I can do with this my fax sales is that I can say, okay, I want to order it by something, right? I can, if I go to the next, uh, let me just go down and do order by. So this is order by. So I can say, I want to order this my query by maybe fax sales revenue. So once I type my fax sales, and in Dark Studio, when you're trying to write a function, once you type a table, it will not give you the column inside that table. But when you, once you press that your square bracket, square open bracket, it will list all your columns inside that table for you. So I want to order by revenue. Let me order by revenue. So I want to order this by revenue. Once I close my bracket and I press F5 to run this, so you see that it will order my table. If you look at this table down here, can you see this revenue start from 120, which is from the smallest to the largest? So it's ordered this table by revenue. So let's say, for example, this table that you are not trying to create, maybe you don't want to start from 100, 120 is too small. Maybe your only pause that you want to do, you want to start from, uh, let's say, 5,000. Look at 5,000. I want to start from 5,000. The table I want to work on, the, the data I want to create, I want to, I want to start from 5,000. Right? You can use another function called start at. It's just by adding a start at, right? Once I type start at, it is another function, right? So once I type start at, I'm just going to state where I want to start from. And for me, I want to start from where? 5,000, right? Once I run my query again, look at this. I just run my query again, and my query should start from uh, 5,000. Let me scroll to the right. So look at my revenue. So now my revenue starts from 5,000. So I'm querying my table and the table is just coming the way I'm querying it. I can say I want to start from 1 million. I want to start from 800. I want to do this, I want to do that. I can do different things, right? With that studio. Another most important thing I like doing with that studio, if I do a new uh, query, let me just do a new query. Another thing I like doing is creating my dimension with that studio. We can create, instead of creating a dimension in Power Query, can also create your dimension with Dark Studio by just doing ordinary evaluate. If I do my evaluate, look at the evaluate, then in this my evaluate, I just want to see my uh, categorization of uh, anything related to location. And in my data, I can simply use a, a function called all. Most of us are familiar with all function, and we normally use all function for a scalar expression. And I'm telling you that you can also use auth function for a table expression as well. And I'm using this auth function for a table expression now. So I want to see all fax sales region. Let me just do fax sales. All fax sales. I want to see all fax sales. Then when I type fax sales and I do my square bracket, remember that square bracket? So show me all the column in my table. And in this table, which of the column is related to, uh, let's say, location? I can see location is related to. Uh, region. Region is related to location. I will pick region, right? That's my first one. Then I'll put a comma. Then once I put a comma, I will type fax sales again. Fax sales again. My square bracket. So which other one is related to location? And uh, I think market. Market is next to region. So like it's just like uh, uh, local government, state, and country. So after region, you should go to state, which is market, right? So I'm just going to pick market. I'll put a comma again. And then the third one that is related to location, let's see. There's another one that is related to location there. So fact sales, and then fact sales, square bracket. Which other one is related to location? Store, right? Store is also related to location. So once I pick my store, right? All these three are related to location. So let me just close my bracket and run this query by pressing F5. Once I run this query, look at this. Can you see just return my region, my market, and my store? And they are unique. You can only see one Abaji uh, in Federal Capital Territory and North Central. One Boari, which is the key. And this is the key, right? That is using my DAX query to create a dimension. Another favorite uh, function that people use a lot when you are trying to write a table function and you are writing a query is a function called uh, summarize. I mentioned I'm going to discuss summarize. It's a function called summarize, right? 
Most of us don't use summarize, and summarize is extremely perfect. And summarize, we, we first take a table and then one or more column, then you cannot create an expression inside summarize, right? If you look at this, uh, my table now, let me just create a simple summarize for you to so see how summarize work, right? And it's very simple. In fact, let me just do this. If I do evaluate, remember how I evaluate? Evaluate, right? And I press enter. And this is my evaluate. What, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to summarize. Once I type summarize, I can see all the function related to come up. Yeah, all the function related to summarize. And once I press my tab, summarize is asking for table, then group by column name, then the name and expression. For most of us that use group, group by in Power Query, this is almost like group by in Power Query. Summarize is asking for my table name now. Which table did you want to use? I want to use my facts data table, right? And then which column did you want to group by? So I want to group by my, uh, let's say I want to group by, uh, what can I group by? Let me just think. What can I group by? What do you think I can group by? Okay, let's say I want to group by, by D model. So I have a model already. So I can say I want to group by my DLOB. Right? So if I want, to, I want to go by my DLOB, um, DLOB, DLOB, right? Is that the first thing I want to go by? Then what else do, would you like to group by? Uh, let's say what else would I like to go by? I think that one is fine. I just want to go by DLOB, and then I can put a comma. I cannot put an es expression, right? So I can call that expression total sales. Total sales. Put a comma again. Then my expression will just be, I think I have a, an expression already called sales. Once I put this curly bracket, you will see all your expression. If I want to bring out my sales, I'll just bring out sales, close my bracket for summarize, and run my query. Once I run my query, you can see the table. The table shows like a report of just LOB and total sales using summarize. I have LOB and total sales. LOB and total sales, showing the result straight up without stress right but i have just three minutes to go let me just quickly show you the last one which is add column so remember i said i will show you add column as well so add column is interesting too so you can add your add column with um, your summarize to perform a great report in fact there's even another one called um, i talk about altering a filter contest most of us use calculate but most of us didn't use calculate table if there is time, I will show calculate table, but for now, let me just show add column. So the add column, most of us don't use it. Remember our evaluate, always start with evaluate, right? So I'm starting with evaluate, and I want to summarize a particular table, and after you summarize that table, I also want to add like two columns. That's basically what I want to do. So I will start with add columns, add columns, then once I open my bracket, inside the add column, add column is asking for table. And to give add column a table, I will use summarize to give add column a table. And that summarize will basically summarize maybe my fact sales data. I want to summarize my fact sales data. And then what do you want to group it by? I want to group it by the same DLOB that I did the other time. DLOB, um, DLOB, DLOB column. Then what other things we want to like to group it by? And let me say I may also want to group it by my D model. Let's go by my D model, D model. Let's go by my model, DLOB and D model, right? Now, once I do this, this I want to group my, this I want to summarize my table. Then I can close my bracket. I want to summarize. Then I cannot put a comma. So I cannot add as many columns as I want now. Let's say I should add a column for this particular summarize I, I actually stated. I may want to add, uh, let's say I want to add, uh, what can I add? Okay, so I, can, I may want to add a total sales like I did the other time. But this time, I, I may also add my transaction count to it. So I'll be measure for 2000 and transaction count already. So I will just say, okay, I want to add, uh, let me just put it in quote. The name of the measure will be total sales. Total sales. Put a comma. Which expression do you want to use? I want to use this expression called sales. I want to add this. And I'll put another comma. So I want to add another name. And the name is just... Um, Transaction count. I will just call this transaction count. Transaction count. Right? Transaction count. I'll put another comma. 
right? And in this microma, what did I want to put? I can, I think I have a function for transcant as well. I'll just come down here and pick my function for transcant, right? And once I do that, just close my bracket and run my query. Can you see my query? Now I have VLOB, I have model, I have total sales, and I have my transaction count. I think I didn't spell it very well. Uh, let me just change the spelling. I have trans, um, trans count. Let me run it again. So I have trans count right here. But look at the way I'm writing this formula. I think it's just uh, somehow, right? That is why you have format query here. I can highlight my query like this and just format it. Right? Once I click on format query, can you see the way formatter formats my query? Now it's looking nice and you can read it now. You can now read it. So that is basically how to use your DAX Studio to query your DAX. So there are so many things you can use your DAX query for. I mentioned I may want to show you um, calculate table as well. It's very efficient using the DAX table as well. But due to our time, I think this is where I will stop. Right. Yeah. I think uh, I thank you very much. Uh, no problem. So sincerely, it's a wonderful section. And I am very sure people will have lots and lots of questions for you. Please, if you have your question, drop your question in the meeting chats. So, okay, I love this comment. This is a wonderful session. So thank you very much, Ola. I appreciate that comment. So if you have question, comment like this, please drop it. We appreciate that.